He has one sheep. He has one sheep. Amen. Say thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I, I tell this because I, uh, I'm, I teach, and a lot of my students, some of them, they don't like writing or reading. Mm -hmm. And so they don't like writing or reading when it's time to answer questions. They're like, I don't have anything to talk about. I don't have anything to write about. And I say, you the loudest one in the classroom. You got plenty to talk about. <laughs> so you got plenty to talk about. You got plenty to write about. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with me, I'm not... I don't get afraid of not having enough to say. I get afraid of having too much to say. Amen. So, amen. amen. I try to tone it back a little bit. Amen. amen. But I, I, I once heard this from a wise man. I don't know if he ever heard this from somebody else. Amen. But he uses it, so I'm going to use it as well. He says, Blessed are the short women, for they be, for they shall be invited back. Amen. <laughs> so I'm here for the second time. I guess I was pretty amen. short, you know. The first time. <laughs> but I thank God, amen, for free course, amen. While we're standing, we're going to go to the word of God, amen. And uh, if you have your Bibles with you, you have your cell phones, iPads, whatever, amen, you can turn to them in the book. This is the New King James Version, John chapter 14 verse 6 this is john chapter 14 verse 6 amen amen, amen. amen. and it says that jesus said to him i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me excuse me also in john chapter 15 verse 7 amen give you time to get there All right. amen john chapter 15 verse 7 this is also the new king james version if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Amen. We thank you, Lord, today for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for being great. Lord, I ask that right now that I decrease as you increase. Lord, I pray that I may speak a word to someone's life, that they may apply it to their daily lives, God. And you give you glory for everything that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. If I can use for a topic today, it is called, There's a Better Way. Amen. 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 So someone say, there's, there's a better, a better way. way. One more time. Say, there's, there's a, better a better way. way. Say it one more time after the one more time and say, there's a better way. There's a better way. Amen. There are three points that I want to uh, point out about the way. Uh, the first one, everyone say, get in the way. Get in the way. So your neighbor and say, get in the way. Get in the way. You know, a lot of people say, get out of my way. But you know, say, get in the way. Amen. Number two. Everybody say number two. Number two. Follow the way. Follow the way. And number three, stay in the way. Stay in the way. So number one is get, get in the way. way. Number two is follow, follow the way. way. And number three is stay, stay in, the in the way. Amen. The first one, get in the way. Everybody say get in the way. Get in the way. Jesus desires a relationship with us and with you to be able to show you a better life. Why? We were born into sin, amen. How many know that we were born into sin? Amen. Through the first Adam, amen, that came in it's and brought sin into the earth. So we were born into sin. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death. Amen. So we deserve to die because of that. Amen. It was sin that was brought into us. So when we are born, you are born into sin. And so we need a Savior. Mm -hmm. And so since then, he wanted us to be saved, amen. Everybody say, Jesus, Jesus wants me to be saved. Amen. Wants me to be saved. Which he, does, he doesn't want uh, destruction for us. He doesn't want that death for us. Amen. So he made a way for us to get out of it. Amen. Uh -huh. Everybody understands that. Amen. amen. And so everybody say, how? how? How do we get out? Amen. There's th two scriptures that comes to mind. It says Romans 10 and 9 and this Acts in 2 and 38. And it tells us about how to, uh, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, then we shall be saved. And also in Acts 2 and 38, this is when Peter, this is the day of Pentecost, when Peter stands up and he tells them, they ask, they say, what shall we do? And, uh, Nigel, could you stand up for me again and quote Acts 2 and 38? No. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And then, Amen. I'm going to give you 
And then Clue. And then. And then. And then. And then Peter said up to them. Read. Repent. Come on, say it. Repent. Repent. I'm going to help you out. Say repent. 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 Be, be baptized. Every, every one of you. And in the. In the name of Jesus Christ. For. For the remission of your sins. And. And you may receive. And you may put. No. And you say. And you shall receive the Holy The gift. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Give her a hand. Amen. Woo! Jesus. Amen. I'm going to keep you fresh. I do that in Sunday school too. They're like, yes, you put them children on the spot. Amen. I do, amen. Because a I forgot that. My pastor always teaches them to be so ready. I know it's only church van. So, amen. We want to train our children to be ready, amen, at all times. Amen. So, this is a part of getting away. And it says how. And this is how we give our life to Christ. We must repent first, amen. And we were talking about this morning in Sunday school how Nicodemus said, uh, how can I be born again of Go back into my mother's womb and then come back again and be born again. Jesus wasn't talking about that. He was saying to be born of the water and of the spirit. Amen. Number two, it says follow the way. And this is one of the meat of my subjects. Everybody say follow the way. Follow the way. We don't stop living because we give our life to Christ. But we actually begin to live more abundantly. Right. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and eat more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And see, one of the things is that I explain even to the, um, the children, this is John 10 and 10, is that I don't crawl in the corner and just say, okay, I'm saved and just sit somewhere. And most of the time, when I was growing up, I would think that in my 13, 15 year old mind, I would think that it was the death sentence, amen to be saved. It, just to be honest, it was the death sentence, amen. So if somebody say, you, you want to come up to be saved? I'm like, wow. Not right now. It is, that's completely like the death sentence right now. Can't do this, can't go here, can't go there, can't do all these things that I'm thinking in my mind, okay, that I, I want to do. I'm young, I feel. You know? And then it says, okay, well here's the death sentence. But it actually was a death sentence, amen. It was actually the death of the old way. Everybody say the old way. The old it's way. the old way, amen. The old way of doing things, but actually it's a new life. And what I want to present to people is I don't want to present to them a way that doesn't look like God wants it to look. God doesn't want our life, our lives to look disfigured. He doesn't want the, the saved life to look like we're just despondent, depressed all the time. And we, it, it's not. Amen. I tell my children all the time, I love being saved. Amen. It is great being Amen. saved. Amen. I love it. I'm happy. Amen. It is awesome. It is awesome. Everybody say it's awesome. Amen. It is awesome being saved. Amen. So, I'm going to ask a question. Who wants to do bad things? Raise your hand if you want to do bad things. So, I asked this question before, too, before somebody. I said, uh, who wants to do bad things? And guess what? No one raises their hand. No one wants to do bad because we innately want to do right. Yes, we really want to do right. Yeah. Uh, who wants to do right in here? Amen. See? You already want to do right, amen? amen. If you don't want to do bad. And so when we say, okay, well, do you want to be saved? You want to give your life to Christ? You're like, I don't, you know, I don't know. But I want to do right. I don't want to do wrong. I want to do right. Yeah. Amen. So on that path of you already wanting to do right, Jesus is the one that can help you do that right. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 So, now, I'm going to ask the question, who thinks living for God is hard? Who thinks living for God is hard? Mm -hmm. And please be honest. Nobody's going to get you. I'm not going to get you. I'm not going to get you. No, your parents will not get you. you who all believes good. that living saved is hard? Okay? And I want y'all to, I, I'm, I'm like this in my Sunday school class. I really want you to be honest. Yeah. If, you think, if you think living, now, I'm going to tell you, uh, how old are you? Twelve. Twelve. And who else raised their hand? How, how old are you? Yeah, about around those ages right there. I, w I would raise my hand and say, yeah, I thought salvation was hard. Yeah. It was hard. And just to see some of the other people, some people were not good examples. Some people were good examples. 
But in some of those, sometimes I pay more attention to the people that, you know, look disfigured and stuff and just like, I don't, I don't want to be saved right now. If that looks like that, I, I won't be like the rappers. They look happy, you know? And so, and we got to be careful with that. We got to be careful with that, you know, making the saved life look hard. It's not. For the Bible says that the, uh, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, amen? That's what he said. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you want to know why? Because living in the way of Christ is easy because we're not alone. Amen? Amen. He is the driver, which is right. Amen? If we listen to him, our life turns out better than if we were making decisions ourselves. Amen? Amen. So in all thy ways, we acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Amen? So we got to make sure that we're following him. So living safe is not hard. Amen. I, I don't know who, if you've been paying attention to anybody or anything like that, but it's not hard because he said it's easy. Amen. If you let God lead you, but if you go your own way, yes, it's going to be hard. It's already hard on your own anyway when you're trying to just live this life. Amen. But if you have someone with you, if you have someone that's in your corner that's saying, okay, I need you to go this way. I need you to say this. I need you not to say this. I need you to go here and go there. Amen. You have someone, amen, to lead and guide you. And life is so much easier. Amen. amen. Everyone say the last point. The, the last, last point. point. Stay in the way. Everybody say stay in the way. Stay, stay in, in the way. way. It is not only good to just have a good start. But you got to finish great. Amen. The race is not given to the swift or the strong, but those that endure or persevere to the end. Don't stop after you first give your life to Christ. It has happened so many times. It has happened to me that once I had given my life to Christ and I was young, I was like, OK, yes. Uh, we was at the altar, I, I think almost every Sunday. Just giving our life to Christ again and again and again after again, just going back. But I was I had to come to the realiza realization that, especially when I got 19, that's when I really got saved. When I was 19, some people say that. You were really young. You both be here and there. I heard some friends say that, you know. But I thank God for being saved at the age of 19, amen. Yeah. Really saved, amen. Um, but even in those times of just going up there saying, okay, um, I gave my life to Christ. And, okay, not knowing that sometimes I'm, I'm a baby now. And so, you know, when babies walk, you know, they, they stumble and you got to have the, the where they you help them mm -hmm. as grown people. Amen. We help them and help them understand that, hey, you got to walk in this way. You got to walk in this light. Amen. You may kind of stumble and fall, but I'm here to catch you and help you. Amen. And restore you. Amen. And so many times we would let them give up. Yeah. They give up so easily. Yeah. I know I would. If I felt like, okay, I got saved, I got rejuvenated, I'm at the altar, I done cried out to the Lord, I gave my life to Christ, I'm good, I'm feeling good, and when I hit the doors, and then now I got to really face everything that I'm facing with at the house now. And now when I really face it at the house, I really, it really proves what is inside of me. And so now we got to teach them how to arm themselves. So now they won't give up so easily. We won't give up so easily because they, we got to face life. Life is going to come. Life does not stop because you get saved. Amen. Amen. Just like Pastor was saying one time that, hey, uh, good, uh, good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people sometimes. That's just the way it is sometimes. Amen. You got to understand that you're going to go through life. You're going to go through turmoil. Just because we're saved, it does not mean that we're not going to face hardships. Amen. Just because you get saved, it doesn't mean every day is going to be a bed of roses. It will not be. When you go back to school, you got to go back to those same friends, some of them looking at you in the face, and you got to live that life that you have proclaimed in church. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. I've been there before. But when you go up to the altar, you done got saved, you done got delivered, you like, thank you, Jesus. I'm going back to school. I'm tell my friends about Jesus and everything. And when you get in class, mm. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. amen. When you get to class, and now it's time to, to show the light. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what. I thank God for one so stuff in here that I see. I teach her right over there. Raise your hand, Miss uh, Leia. Amen. This, this girl, she really shows the light of Christ. She made an eight in class, and this girl will shout everywhere. 
they, she was shouting when she was saying thank you, Jesus, and everything. Up in there. And you can tell she's not ashamed, amen. I thank God for that, amen. Because I was one of the ones that didn't do that. Uh-huh. Let me tell on myself, amen. Not at her age. Mm-mm. Not at her age, amen. And some of you the same at your age, amen. amen. So the same thing that, that it applies, amen. That we must stay in the way. So when we start good, we must end great. So you may even make mistakes, but you gotta understand that you must die daily yeah. to the flesh. Yeah. Everyone, we are dying daily to the flesh. Yeah. Everybody in here who professes the name of Jesus yeah. Christ, we are dying daily to the flesh. Amen. Um, so we gotta understand that that's what's gonna happen. So young people, anybody, when you give your life to Christ, you got to understand that you have to go through things and you have to take out this flesh because we're still uh, we're still living in this flesh. Amen. We are living in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. Amen. So you got to understand that we may still go through sicknesses. Amen. We may still go through uh, hardships. Amen. We may go through relationships that are, are end up broken and stuff like that. You still going to be faced with those things, but you need Jesus to make it through. Right. You need Jesus to make it through. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, you need Jesus to make it through. You need Jesus Amen. to make it through. And so, what I would like to see for the youth to do is for them to gather together, amen. Yeah. Those are the ones who are in our churches yeah. to gather, amen, and shape our school systems, amen, amen. because you guys can do it. But you got to get on one accord, amen. But so many times, one of the things that we feel when, when I was young is that we are alone. Yeah. I'm by myself. And so, since I feel like I'm by myself on this island, I, I can't, just can't do it. Amen. But if you guys will gather together, amen, and say that we are going to live for Christ, amen, yeah. I'm going to check on you, you're going to check on me, amen, we're going to be in this thing together, amen. Yeah. I think a whole lot of things would be a whole lot better, amen, because yeah. that's the way the church is supposed to be anyway. We're supposed to strengthen each other, amen, so we won't give up so easily or fall so easily, amen. So many people, so many youth, and so many other uh, adults, amen, we we wouldn't fall, amen, if we would have that support system that we need to have. I'm checking on you, you checking on me, amen. I thank God for you. Or when you come to me, I'm not putting your business out there in the streets or anything like that. I am to restore you in the spirit of meekness, amen. We are in this together. We cannot lose another soldier, amen. We cannot lose another soldier, amen. So we need to make sure we keep going. So everybody say, keep going. Keep going. Amen. We got to keep going. That's one of the biggest things. We got to keep going because we get saved, amen. But sometimes it seems like we don't want to stay there, amen. Uh -huh. So let's persevere, amen. So I got to understand this because I, like if, I'm going I'm to bring it home to me. Like so many times we can get so uppity or whatever uh -huh. and stuff like that. But I got to understand that I'm dying daily to my flesh. Because if, if I argue with that woman right there, uh -huh. and, you know, and I, I'm not even saying cursing or anything. Because so many times you said, if I didn't curse, then, okay, I'm pretty good. Uh -huh. But you said something that was uh, not pleasing to God. That's right. That's and you, it don't have to be cursing, y'all. Right. You can say something, and that's, that has nothing with curse words in it, uh -huh. that can hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. And that's wrong. Yeah. It goes that deep. Amen. Yeah. So it's not just about, okay, I didn't curse or anything, so I'm okay. No, that's not, that's not right. Amen. It could be anything that's hurtful that you said to anybody. Yeah. Anything, any gesture that you made that could hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. You got to, this is what we must die daily to. Yeah. Amen. So if I hurt that woman's feelings right there, and I'm calling myself elder, and I say, I get a pass on that. No, I don't. I must die daily to that. Amen. Right. I must die from that. Amen. Yeah. If I have a problem with that. See, uh, a lot of times I, we could point out each other's faults and stuff like that. But you got to look at yourself, amen. Everybody point to myself and say, you got to examine yourself daily, amen. We die daily to the, fr to the flesh, amen. We got to die daily to the flesh. So, once you, uh, once you have given your life to Christ, you got to understand that. Once you get that into your mind, I believe we can live a perfect life before God, amen. I really do. I really do believe, because a lot of people, they'll say, well, uh, that's pretty weak right there, letting people know that, okay, well, they got, they, they'll have some things inside of them that they got to change. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. 
You got things to change inside of you. You want, just, just because you got saved doesn't mean that you have made it. You have already made it. There's things that you got to die to daily. God takes certain things away from you, but there's things that you got to persevere through, and you got to fast, and you got to pray, and you got to stay before God. Amen. Amen. And you can walk before him. And you can go into the school system and you can walk and they'll see that, hey, there's something different about her. There's something different about him because they're walking up right before God. Amen. But I got to come to the real realizations that I got to die daily because some stuff can be presented to me that that can uh, bogart me in a way uh -huh. that I'm not like really ready for. Amen. Uh -huh. And you can get T-boned sometimes from the blind side. Amen. Uh -huh. Because if somebody, like I said, somebody, like last time I was here, so I said somebody come slap you in the face, amen. <laughs> we always say, you know, we thank God and we, we're just going to say hallelujah or something, amen. But until you get into that situation, amen, you pray that I will be able to respond. Now, Jesus, he responded in a way when they spit in his face and called him all different types of names. He responded in a way that we are supposed to respond. Yeah. Amen. But we got to die daily to this place because once we have gotten saved, we knew more about the world than we knew about Christ. That's why we had to pick up the Bible and begin to read it. We had to begin to pray. We had to fast because I got to kill this flesh. Because if I don't, if I just let it lay dormant, and if I just put the Bible to the side and said, I'm just saved right now, I will end up following. Yeah. Amen. 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 This is the reason why when you first give your life to Christ, we tell you, read the Bible. Yeah. This is the reason why we tell you to strengthen yourself because you will be faced with life. Amen. 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 Real life. Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. So this is the word of God. Amen. So it's not God's fault. It is who is our biggest enemy. And who do you think our biggest enemy is? Somebody raise your hand. Anybody want to answer this question? Who is the who is the biggest enemy, Michael? Um sometimes it could be yourself. He hit it right on the head. I know a lot of us want to say, it's the devil. The devil made me do it. The devil. That's what it was. It's the devil. The devil this and the devil that. And sometimes the devil be like, I will gladly accept the credit. Thank you. You know, I will gladly accept this credit right here. Thank you for this honor and this award. Amen. I, I thank you, Father. Amen. But the Bible says that when, it, when a man sins, he is drawn away by his own lust. And enticement. Mm -hmm. You have to watch out for yourself. Mm -hmm. The biggest enemy that you have in your life is you. Yes, Point to yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the devil, he can come plant things. Mm -hmm. He can come sit beside you and suggest things all day. But does that mean you have to fall to it? No. The only person that makes that decision is you, right. yourself. So he presents something, just like when Jesus came out that 40-day fast, he came out of, went into the mountains. He told him, he said, you know, turn this, uh, turn this stone into bread and stuff like that. He was being tempted at that moment. He said, you know, your angels can come catch you and everything and stuff like that. Who wouldn't want to do that type of stuff, amen? To show somebody, to prove somebody wrong, amen? That was dealing with the pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got to understand that, amen? So our biggest enemy is ourself. Yeah. The reason why I can say that is because the Bible has already said that the devil is a defeated foe. Mm -hmm. So he's already defeated. But you're not. Mm -hmm. Amen? The devil is defeated, but you're not. Amen? Mm -hmm. So you have to start facing you. Because the devil will plant he will send friends in your way and put bugs in your ear and then will go around the corner and watch you self-destruct. Amen? Amen? Notice I said self-destruct. That means he can't make you do it. There's nobody in this world that can make you do anything. They can only present it. You're drawn away by your own lust. I like it. I see it, I want it. Uh -huh. so Amen? Amen? But can't nobody make you do it. No one can make you. Yes. It's you, yourself, that you have to fight daily. Yes. And that's one of the points that I really want to get across that you got to understand. I got to face me. Amen. 
but just because, just like I said, somebody slap you or somebody do something against you, you gotta be like, okay, I gotta fight myself now. Yeah, yeah. When you see someone else engaging in a, a confrontation or a fight or anything like that, you gotta understand that first of all, they had to fight themselves first. And some of them told, go ahead and do what you gotta do. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right, so. Now, what we got to do is we got to read the word of God. We got to build endurance. Amen. In body and exercise, y'all know we got to live weights, right? Yeah. You got to get out there. You got to run. Amen. I'm tired. Okay. You got to run. Amen. You got to run. I'm really like, like tired. Of this. Okay. You really got to run. In body and exercise. Amen. We are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Everybody say, we are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Amen. If you don't know anything, knowledge is power. Anybody ever heard that before? Uh -huh. Knowledge is power. So we must know things, amen. So we have to, uh, one of the things that you got to do is for you young people, amen. And I noticed this really helped for me. Is I found like an accurate Bible translation that I can understand. You know, I understand, you know, we have all these different types of translations. And you guys have social media and all this internet stuff that we used to didn't have like back in the day, like when I was growing up. And I can actually say back in the day, why? Uh -huh. You know, when we were growing up, because we were in that mid age of like the internet just not coming in, mm -hmm. you know. So you guys have access to everything where you can know some of everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. I was just telling my students the other day, y'all can be anything that you want to be. Yes, you can learn how to do anything that you want to do. If you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook, you're on Snapchat, everything. You're like that. You can learn all this stuff. It's just the, the, the sky is the limit of what you can know. Amen? amen? All these things that you can learn, amen? And God has these things accessible for you. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. I will not let that scripture slip out of my mind. So when anything comes up where I feel like I cannot have it or I can't obtain it, I read that scripture and it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to God. Amen. And if the world can use things to obtain it, God says, I will give you more. Amen. amen. We don't have to cheat, steal, and rob to get anything. God has already laid it for us. Amen. He's given us, if we commit our life to him, amen. There is a better way, amen. amen. There is a better way. So, everybody say spiritually work out. Spiritually work out. And the only reason why you need to spiritually work out is for yourself, but also for someone else. In conclusion, life never stops whether you decide to give your life to Christ or not. But it sure is easier and better when you have someone to depend on to help you through the most difficult times as we celebrate the victories in the good times. Amen. Would you stand with me? Amen. Lord, we thank you for this word right now, God. We thank you that we have listeners right now that will listen. I 